have you join us on another exciting episode of Art House. I'm Melinda Akinlami on today's edition of the program. Two artists share their different experiences about what it means to be a creative on the move. To a group exhibition at the Art Pantheon Gallery in Lagos. We see that and more in a moment. Do stay with us. The hallmark of a good work of art is quality. Evolving Lines of Our Time is an exhibition by a group of artists at the Art Pantheon Gallery in Lagos. The Art Pantheon Gallery in Lagos presents its latest exhibition of works of art in a show titled Evolving Lines of Our Time that celebrates the drawing medium. The artists who are, who are showing have different approaches to the to drawing and create, uh, creating their work. So everybody's here on merit. Nobody's here because it's a cousin to somebody. We're all here because over the years, by the grace of God, essentially, we've done the things we need to do. That's why we're here. Most artworks that we see starts from lines, it starts from drawings. For a lot of collectors or a lot of art enthusiasts, they are not even aware that some artists can even draw. So that's why we have actually brought this contemporary and the masters together and showcased their master draftsmen. The artists, who are familiar names in the industry, explain what is at the heart of their works of art, especially as it relates to the issues in the society. My whole work is about how I, how I relate with everything, my environment, family, family issues, pressures, economy, petrol price, uh, bad roads, terrible settlement and bridge, everything is my work. Right now, it's, there's a lot of confusion here and there. People do so many genders now, so many identities. So you begin to ask yourself that, who really are we? So is it that a man doesn't look like a man again, or a woman doesn't look like a woman anymore? So it's in that, I, as I was researching, and then I now did this piece. So as you can see, most of them, they're all headless. And it's just still in that asking of questions that, should we still retain the way God made us, or we should think differently? My works really speak on themes around introspection or reflective moments. So I like to capture a moment in time where we're by ourselves reflecting on um, behaviors or past events um, that we have experienced. And in this exhibition, some of the works are specific. If you look at that one in particular, um, which is one of my favorites, um, it looks at someone who is in a moment of rest. So. Um, those are the kind of simple images that I've captured in my work. The, the works I display are uh, one, a nude girl, a uh, semi-nude girl, and some of the works like uh, two girls playing with a teddy. It denotes the kind of uh, activities that goes on within young girls that just left secondary school and they are waiting for their jam result to come out. You know, They are just idle at home and probably looking for something else to, to play with when they have a, a phone to play with. So this kind, this kind of activities always go on in the, in the poor setting. I have my Joy series and uh, I also have the Lagos, uh, what I can say, the Lagos energy that you can now expand to be the Nigerian energy, uh, like we can see and experience. Uh, that is having, bringing some value to the already very robust uh, global energy 
and we are bringing in this dimension um, that people have come to see as positive and as something very unique and of course something that is enduring and very creative. started when I decided to take my, my love to help people out of the clinic and start to showcase the kind of issues and skin changes that happened um, with my art so I can raise awareness, you know, to stop stigmatization of certain skin concerns. So that was the turning point of my art and that was what made my art more about skin they also talk about the technique used in achieving these images that tell a lot of stories with different approaches employed by each artist. Uh, this exhibition is a selection and exhibition of an artist that can be able to draw very well and I've been using um, a line to interpret their emotions, desires and the rest. So since my work has been a sort of work that people like to collect and I'm a kind of person that I don't normally do drawings regularly on the on the exhibition scale, but I do drawings on before I do any sketch, any paintings. So I, I took this upon myself that let me just participate in this kind of um, um, exhibition, so people can see that a drawing can also make uh, an impression in the art world. The medium of expression here is mainly charcoal and pastels. Um, these are media I have come to enjoy. They help me at, at my preparatory stage of, um, you know, getting my thoughts out of those inner spaces. tough because we actually know what each artist is made of so we critically looked at masters in lines in strokes and if you look at every work they all have peculiar lines and strokes that evolves into paintings or into art that you all see so it wasn't such a difficult one to do. All these unique drawings show that the foundation of art should never be ignored, as it is also a desirable and elevated style, depending on how the artist can create it. I want the viewer to look at the works with so much passion and in the, in the desire to, uh, to see the inner, um, inner creativity of the artist to see an, as an artist that can look deep into themselves and create something out of the ordinary. The contemporaries and the masters. So you have the Olaku, you have the Dosa, Ogigo, you have Duke Asidere, and you have Maju Shulola, you have the young contemporaries. But there's something similar to all of them. They're masters in their lines. So this is the similarity that brings the masters and the contemporaries together. And that's what we've done to put all of them together. And what I would say to artists is master and fine tune your lines. It matters most. These lines of the time have been created by some of the best in the field of artistic practice in Nigeria who show that no matter the height one attains, never forget the foundation and hold firm to values. Our wordsmith is by Ruby Jones, titled Wanne La Wanne. Two peas in a pod, made to be one. If one calls, the other responds. If one falls, the other supports. 
two beings beloved raised as one. They carry each other in care and in love. They treat each other with respect and trust. Wanne la wanne yiriotu diefe kedunke kamma, meaning siblings putting on same clothes. Which one is better? Wanne la wanne mbe wada kwa sirim agame leganya, meaning when the world has forsaken me, I will look up to you. Mbe nyogba jiri mge lanya ni megi, meaning when the mirror is broken. I will look through you. Let's take a moment now. Art House returns with another interesting showcase. Join us again. And these are the works of art you sent in recently. Let's begin with unbraided totes. It's a charcoal on canvas work by Amosor Joshua. Then this oil pastel work called Sunset is done by Solomon Ado. Then Beloa Art is appreciating the beauty of old age with his pen on paper piece. Then to City Boy, an oil on canvas piece by Oscar Tamgam. We dance the pala is a work of art done by Joel Seppo with oil on canvas board. Then Market Day Agony is a work by Tunde Ajewole with pen. Thanksgiving is a watercolor on paperwork by Antion Hart. Then we wrap things up with a Basket of Fortune done by Esther Obiru with acrylic on canvas. concludes the works of art you sent in this week we appreciate you for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming contemporary artist stacy rovero and francis agemo display what it means to be truly nomadic at the nomadic art gallery in lagos The Nomadic Art Gallery in Lagos has taken a different approach with this exhibition as it shows twin solo shows featuring artists who live semi-nomadic and nomadic lifestyles that have inspired their creations. What we did in this exhibition is to focus on artists who are truly nomads. Um, that is artists that um, travel a lot and get inspired by their travels, you know, um, get inspiration from the environment, from the cultural diversity, and, um, you know, all of the exposures that they get when they travel, create while they are traveling, and also get inspired by the people that they meet when they travel. So that's what truly nomadic is about. I'm inspired by um, life, I'm inspired by the people I meet. I'm inspired by the stories that we share, I'm inspired by all the things that I do, I'm inspired by the poems that I write, um, I'm inspired by nature. A lot of the time nature actually inspires me. The 
artists who have been inspired by the people they have met along the way explore the themes of cultural diversity, human connection and the transformative power of travel through the paintings and sculptural pieces. This body of work is called My People and My Places. So all of these pieces are inspired by the different people I've met in um, all of the places that I've traveled to. Um, like for instance, this piece behind me is inspired by my sister who's passed away, St. Lupi. Um, and of course, she's in a place where we, we will eventually all go, but it's not here in this plane. Um, and then this is um, King Akitelek, which is named after my friend in Kenya that I met in a residency. And you have all these pieces, different people, um, Chief Sokari, inspired by Sokari Douglas Camp, who's based in London. So all of these people are people I've met, have inspired my work in one way or the other. And um, I think it was important to include that in the whole trajectory of all the places I've been and all the people that I've had. try to let my works reflect on things I grew up with. So, and just to remind the upcoming now, to know that you all belong to one tradition, even for the fact that we are all, you know, changed or we are all moved to uh, the, the popular tradition, the religion now, Christian, Muslim, but we have something behind. So that's what my art is about. The nomadic artist's journey is also celebrated with the works of art that show how that experience sparks their creativity in many aspects. Every single waking moment is art for me. The way I clothe myself, the way I breathe, the way I navigate relationships, an art form. So um, I can't really separate the life from the arts. And so it shows and it manifests in every single thing that I do and all the experiences I curate and all the ways that I show up in the world. So it's all an expression of art. These artists that are featured here today, first of all, are artists that work on, that are multifaceted. Um, so both Stacey Rivero and Francis Agemo, they have um, different... Um, they work on different, you know, techniques. Um, as you can see with um, Stacy, she works on metal sculptures and also does paintings. Same with Francis Agemo, he paints. And um, you can see here we have uh, paintings that are on canvas and also paintings that are on um, paper. So, um, yes, their work um, truly speaks for them. The influence of moving from one place to another and their encounters along the way find expression in these works of art which can be a daunting creative process. Even apart from me traveling from one place to another, for me to create about 10, 5 works and they are different from each other, I think is like a journey which different from each other so when you travel to five different countries you always see five different things so and that's how my work relates to the theme of this show fabrication and the technique here is quite um, arduous in the creation process because first of all I've, I do the sketch and then I blow up the sketch to the scale that I want it and then I start to select the metal bars and um, from the straight metal bars I start to bend them into the shapes each shapes by brick by brick so I take them in tiny pieces and then once I have all of them into the shapes then I start to weld them one by one and then create that form so it's a 
long stretch of um, of a process and takes really long time. And of course, the welding process is very um, very interesting, exciting, but also difficult because uh, during the making of this, I actually burnt my face <laughs> because I was too close to the welding smoke and so you know I had like burns on my hairline burns on my nose and you know sometimes you have these um these things when you're working with fire working with metal you know and but, but it's it's quite interesting it's part of the story sometimes you cut yourself uh, the work makes you really work you know and so very exciting and then these works on canvas um is a uh, mixed media oil pastel and acrylic on canvas and it's really exciting to make it's very fluid in the mark making and uh, the aesthetic also cuts across all of all of the work well, you can obviously tell that the artists are travelers. You can see it in their work, trying to explore boundaries and settings. A lot of innovation coming across the lines. A lot of boundary breaking ideas and works. There's a lot of creativity infused. You can tell that this is a passion project for both artists. Uh, it was a really good exhibition. I'm glad I came out and I'm very happy to be here. Travel can really inspire, um, you know, artistic expressions of artists, um, not only in the experiences that they have, but the people that they meet. Because you can see in um, with the works of Francis Agema, there's portraits of people that he's met during his travels. Same thing with um, Stacey Ravero. She has um, portraits of people that she has met during her travels, and these works are titled after them. So yes, that travel would truly be able to inspire an artist because there's a lot of experiences that you get when you travel and meet people and have all this um you know escape from your regular um reality um can inspire the artistic expression of, of an artist stacy rivero and francis agemo have distinct approach to their artistic interpretations but their love for travel is the connection and definition of truly nomadic <laughs> It gets even more exciting on the next episode as we show you some female players in the creative world. Next week on Art House. Visual Dialogues, a group exhibition by the Female Artists Association of Nigeria in Lagos. To this solo exhibition by another female artist by Professor Biju Laiwala titled Body, Blue and Beyond at the Thought Pyramid Art Center in Lagos. We encourage you to keep liking, sharing and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's the program today. Thank you for being great company as I look forward to interacting with you next time. But remember, you can see this and other episodes on our YouTube platform. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Have a wonderful time.